Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 47th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we're going to check out some more date and time functions and the first one that we're going to have a look at is the month name function and uh, this function takes in a date value as an argument and it, it returns the name of the month of the date passed, right? So uh, to use this function you have to type in the select keyword first and then uh, the name of the function which is month name and then within parentheses, you just type in some date value within single quotes. So I'll just pass in 2017, uh, let's say March and uh, the fourth day, right? So when we execute, we see that in the results that we get March. So now, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if, if you're passing in a date value, you can tell yourself, uh, you know, what the month is. But then, you know, if... Uh, you are displaying messages, let's say, to users on uh, your website. And if suppose, uh, you know, uh, some user has entered uh, his or her date of birth, you know, while signing up on your website, and uh, if you want to display a message for uh, his birthday month, right, in that case, uh, you know, I mean, you're not going to check or monitor for each user and then type in a message and, you know, display on the user's uh, profile or something. But, you know, instead, you're going to have all these functions running in the background. And then these functions are going to fetch the, you know, day names and the month names and all those things and uh, help you sort of make a message, uh, you know, a common message for all your uh, users and, uh, you know, but with different month values and different uh, day values. So I hope you guys are getting my point. But then, you know, even if you don't uh, want to use these functions, it's, it's absolutely OK. You know, I just just want you to know that you can do all these things in SQL and uh, the next one that we're going to check out is the time diff function and uh, this function is used to find difference in uh, time values and uh, there is actually a limit uh, to which you can obtain the difference and I guess that's about 850 hours or something for MySQL. I don't know about other distributions and I'm not even sure whether it's different for different dis distributions but then for MySQL I guess the limit is close to 800 hours. So if the, if the difference exceeds that then it just returns that value and nothing else, right? So but if, if the date or time values are like really close then this is a very useful function. It will tell you the exact difference in, you know, number of hours, number of minutes, number of seconds, that kind of thing. So to use this function you have to get in select and then uh, the name of the function which as I said is time diff T I M E D I W -E F and then you get in a set of parentheses and you pass in uh, time values and like complete time values so you'll have to mention dates too right so let's say I want to find the difference between uh, 1976 and then October 11th and uh, let's say the time value is uh, 17 50 hours and 28 seconds and uh, let the second value be 1976 October 11th and then uh, 8 p.m. okay so that would be 2008 and then uh, let's say 27 seconds so when I would execute this function I would get that you know the difference between these two values is minus two hours and 17 minutes and 59 seconds so you know i'm sure you guys would appreciate that it's a wonderful function and you can imagine applications of it and uh, the next one that we're going to check out is the time to seconds function and you don't actually write it that way it's time underscore two underscore sec that's what the name of the function is so as you can guess what this function does is it takes in a time value and returns the value in a uh, number of seconds. So it basically takes an hour, minute and second values and it returns the second values by multiplying the number of hours by 3600, multiplying the number of minutes by 60 and then adding the second values if there is actually a second argument, right? So to use it, you type in time underscore to underscore sec and then within parentheses, you type in a time value within single quotes, of course. So let's say I want to find the second value of 23 hours, 15 minutes and uh, 26 seconds. Put in a semicolon at the end. And when I execute the function, I get 83,726. So, you know, uh, I guess there are 86,400 seconds in a day. So it's you know just a little short of reaching the 2400 mark, right? So 
Let's check on one more function and uh, this is my favorite function and it's actually a function for all the programmers who are watching this course. It uh, is to obtain the Unix timestamp of date values and if you're working with some kind of programming language, uh, you know, um, uh, like PHP or Python, you know, if you're doing scripting and stuff, then uh, I'm sure you guys must be used to working with Unix timestamp values and you know, um, it's it's basically a Unix timestamp is you know is the number of seconds that have elapsed between the time or date that you pass in and uh, 1st January 1970 and the value is in seconds, right? So with that value, you can you know uh, you know just work with dates in a more efficient way. And uh, if you just like the functions that we've discussed in this course, I mean, you know, the ones that we've discussed before, uh, the one that we're going to check out now, you know, you can just skip the rest of the tutorial and, you know, you don't really have to know this function. That's what I uh, want to say. So I'll just demonstrate it. You type in select and uh, then you type in Unix underscore time stamp. And, uh, you know, if you do not pass in any argument to this function, then it returns, uh, you know, the timestamp for the current time and date value, right? So I'll put in a semicolon at the end to obtain, uh, like, the current timestamp. When I execute it, I get, you know, these many seconds have elapsed between 1st January 1970 and uh, 15th uh, January 2014, 1.49 p.m., right? So that's it for now, and thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I don't think there are any more date and time functions that we're going to discuss in this course, but there are some more important topics like views and subqueries and, you know, maybe a couple of DDL commands like alter table or something. So we're going to check out those uh, in the next tutorials and uh, you may subscribe to my channel and uh, I'm going to see you soon.